Introducing Extreme E. The world's first FIA all-electric off-road rally series. Racing around the world in a bid to highlight the most important climate issues of our generation. With elite male and female racing drivers. Let's go. Racing as equals. In the most remote corners of planet Earth that remain at risk. This is going to be the most extreme motorsport. I'm super impressed. Still trying to adapt to it. It's really important for women in motorsports to be highlighted like this. And it's amazing that we can do so whilst raising awareness of the climate crisis. This is Extreme E. And this is the virtual series launch. Yes, that's right. This is the official virtual series launch for Extreme E. We are here aboard the St. Helena in all its glory, the mothership and new home to the series. My name is Nikki Shields. And right now, you can hopefully see that we are in the main hull. Now, this is obviously a replica um, because actually the real St. Helena is currently being loaded up with everything that we need ahead of season one. So Extreme E, it's a series unlike anything else that exists. And we're so excited to be here today to explain exactly how the sport is absolutely smashing the mold and creating a groundbreaking platform for sport through its purpose-driven mission for the planet. Now today you're going to be hearing how the series is developing, all the innovations that it's utilising and the way that it's actually supporting the remote race communities. And today we'll also be hearing from all the teams involved, including the most recently revealed entry, uh, which I'm sure you agree will uh, reignite a great racing rivalry. Can't wait to see that play out. Now today all the teams will also get the opportunity to unveil their race car livery and talk publicly about their campaigns for the very first time as we are now really counting down to the start of season one. So I'm super excited because now it's time to introduce the person who knows this project better than anyone. It is, of course, the Extreme E founder, Alejandro Gag. Alejandro, how are you? Great to see you here in Hello. person. Yes, great to see you in person. Like, um, you know, you and I can be in the same room. Hello, everyone else uh, out there. And yeah, it's really, it's really amazing to be here today. Now, it's rapidly fast approaching the start of season one. Tell us a bit more about what we can expect. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to believe, but uh, also incredibly exciting that we are just a few short months before we're going racing for the first time. This event today marks a truly exciting countdown or the start of a countdown for us as the dream starts to, go, to become a reality. When we launched the idea of Extreme E 18 months ago, uh, it, certainly, it certainly felt like the right thing, uh, the right time for such a project. Uh, although many, and we're used to that, sometimes saw it as a completely crazy idea. But we, we like when, when people see our projects as, uh, as crazy ideas. Now we stand here all, all together virtually with just months to go until our first season. And we find ourselves, unfortunately, in a very different world. Coronavirus brought the sports world to a standstill. And every sport is still trying to get to grips with how to properly get going again. It's been a tough time to be starting a, a new sport, and we've had challenges. We also spent a lot of time adapting plans, and I'm pleased to say that we are on track and committed to going racing early next year. We've been very busy behind the scenes, and I look forward to telling you more about the calendar, which has had a few adaptations. It's all very exciting, and we are here to guide you through the key points of the series over the next hour. Now, we are more sure than ever that Extreme E is the right and crucial mission for our time. And 2021 is the perfect time to start afresh after the difficult year that 2020 has been. Over the past 18 months, since we were first on board this ship, although not real, this is the virtual one, but we were on board of Santa Elena, launching Extreme E, we've made huge progress. The quality of the teams and the drivers involved now is absolutely mega. We have a world first sporting format, which will see for the first time male and female drivers race together for victory. 
And of course, we are now an approved FIA international series. Our season one is gonna take us to the front lines of the climate crisis, to some amazing places where we will get to shine a crucial spotlight on the serious climate issues they face using sport as our lens for action. Now, it really is an incredible achievement to be here today and be announcing the calendar. But of course, we wouldn't be here without the incredible support from our amazing fans and sponsors who have been watching over the course of the last 18 months and are hopefully all watching live here today and very excited to get the series underway. And now it's time to actually hear from one of our key sponsors. Hi, Nikki. Yes, this is Philip here from Continental Tires in Germany. We are all here watching live and very excited for the show. You're doing such a great job and it's been fantastic to be involved with Extreme E so far. For us at Continental, it's an incredibly exciting time. We are already counting the remaining days until the first race and are happy to be able to present our high performance tires to the many, many motorsport fans around the world. Hello everyone, it's Andrea Panconesi from Luisa Viroma live from beautiful Florence in Italy. We are super excited for the launch of season one and very proud to be official partner of Extreme E. Hi, I am Abdelaziz bin Turk Al Faisal, Minister of Sports at the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, a racing driver speaking to you from Riyadh. I am truly thrilled and proud to witness the virtual launch of Extreme E. As today we take a step closer to the start of a new chapter in motorsports history. Saudi Arabia is humbled, honored, and ready to welcome the talented male and female drivers of this game-changing series to our country. I'm Giuliano from CBMM Nairobi, talking directly from Sao Paulo, Brazil. We are very excited to be part of this virtual launch today and proud to be a founding supplier participating since the beginning in this amazing project. Motorsport is quite uh, interesting to have something so, so new for, for, for us. I think this is going to be the most extreme form of motorsport. What the car can really do, it's, it's really amazing. You can climb some rocks, some dunes, which petrol cars can't do it. It's not possible. We need to test out these cars in the most extreme environments ever and off-roading couldn't be like more perfect for this. It's going to take you to all corners of the globe. It's going to take you to the desert. It's going to take you to the rainforest. You know, nothing else is going to have that background, which I believe will be one of the major talking points of the future. Now, no motorsport is complete without a vehicle. And the Odyssey 21 promises to showcase the cutting edge of electric vehicle capabilities and be a testbed for technology. Let's take a look. This is our masterpiece, Odyssey 21. 
built in order to withstand extreme conditions, the car's peak 400 kilowatts or 500 horsepower output is capable of firing the 1,650 kilogram, 2.3 meter wide electric SUV from zero to 62 miles per hour in 4.5 seconds at gradients up to 130%. The build process started last year and the team at Spark Racing Technology have been working very hard ever since. Every vehicle comprises a common package of standardized parts with a battery produced by Williams Advanced Engineering. This encompasses a niobium reinforced steel alloy tubular frame as well as a crash structure and roll cage. While tires built for the extreme conditions are designed by founding partner Continental Tires. For season one, teams have the choice to use our bodywork, use their own, or work with an OEM so they can put road-going bodywork on the common chassis in order to utilize the platform to speak directly to the consumer market. You can see here that the workshop is now full of these cars and build process was pretty interesting, taking place across France, Germany, and England. So here we are in the Spark workshop, starting the assembly of the first uh, prototype of x -Remy. So within the next months, we are going to finalize the design of the car, which is really well underway now. Each tube uh, which are used to produce the car are uh, reinforced using uh, niobium. This makes the steel stronger. Building the car starts with the design of the car on the computer. The scan enables us to um, see the difference between the computer design and the real life, the real chassis. We start to do the assembly of all bodyworks, uh, reinforcement panel, all the internals, which are also coming every day, so it's a very tight schedule. Uh, it's, uh, the pressure is ramping up slowly, but uh, it's all very exciting. When I first got the Extreme E project on my desk, I was just like, we've got no data. We, we don't know what the tracks are going to be like. It's extremes of temperatures, it's extremes of pressures, it's extremes of um, locations, and I just thought that this is really going to challenge the engineering teams. Extreme E has allowed us to make some big steps in how we're pushing technology for lithium-ion battery cells. The minus 30 to plus 40 degree temperature, the up to 100% humidity, the 45G shock loading and crash case that we're designing. So the battery will be located in the rear of the vehicle on a specific subframe and it's mounted from the underside of the car. It weighs 400 kilos and has a rated capacity of 50 kilowatt hours. So to put that into perspective, the stored energy in this device could keep 2,600 phones charged for a week. So first thing will be the profile. The portfolio team, they are going to sketch it for us. And then when we have the, all the sketch as we wanted, we will order the mold. Even the vehicle is not ready, so we are developing the tires parallelly to the vehicle. So we have to be in constant contact with the vehicle makers as well. Now we have got the first 3D print from the mold of the Extreme E tire. And uh, this is exactly the tread width will look like. And uh, the outside diameter is uh, about 932 millimeter, which is about 37 inches. And the width is 20.5 inches. The first prototype, it weighs up around uh, 25 kgs, which is one of the lightest in this dimension. Fantastic. And we'll be seeing what all the cars in their new liveries look like when we hand them over to the teams very shortly. But first, it's time to delve a bit deeper into the purpose and meaning behind this championship and to outline why it's so important to us. The Arctic ice sheet is melting beyond belief. Our sea levels are rising at record rates. The lungs of our planet, the Amazon, is burning. Land temperatures in the Death Valley are reaching record rates that are inhabitable for humans. And the planet glaciers could be gone by the end of the century. Whilst we are also facing a global pandemic which has its own devastating consequences, there is no vaccine for the climate crisis. We can't put a mask on it or social distance ourselves from this problem. 
The responsibility for our planet is down to all of us. We all need to act now and take notice. We think sport and extreme can be part of the solution for this action. So Alejandro, Extreme E is not just a motorsport, it is a sport for purpose. What specifically do you mean by that? Sport is the biggest entertainment platform in the planet. Millions more people watch sport than watch science documentaries, for example. But we believe the two can work together, both to excite audiences and educate with important messages they might not usually seek to hear. 30% of the world's global emissions come from transport, and as emissions are a root cause of climate change, we believe motorsport and its audience can play an important role in the wider adoption and acceleration of clean energy mobility, which is essential for our planet's future health. Extreme E stands for electrification, environment, and equality. This is the purpose of our mission. 100% electric vehicles. Racing in five extreme and remote environments to educate on the biggest climate issues of our time. Motorsports first fully gender equal sporting format. In the UK, petrol and diesel cars are outselling electric cars by 37 to one. So there's a lot of work to be done. We need to improve the technology to make electric cars cheaper. So in the future, all cars sold would be electric. I believe using sport to highlight the effects of climate change is, is a great idea because it's emotional and uh, it gets people involved. A lot of people follow motorsport. Maybe even more people follow motorsport than watch environmental documentaries. We can use motorsport as a tool to spread this message and to raise awareness about climate change. All other sports like football, tennis, there's a lot of people watching it, but you're not developing something which will affect climate change in a direct way. And the only two series at the moment that are tackling this in the right way or with uh, renewable technology is Formula E and uh, Extreme E. Now, we know that sustainability is a key focus for Extreme E and that the emphasis is clearly on electrification, with the cars being electric. But Alejandro, can you tell us a bit more about the sustainable features of the series? Yes, sustainability is a key area of consideration for every department of Extreme E, and this is extremely important for the series. Our number one goal is to be a climate positive series, which means our goal is to remove more carbon from the world than we put into it. We plan to go the extra mile to create positive impact and we'll use the UN's framework, which is to reduce, measure and offset for what we can't avoid. On the reduction side, our key initiatives involved 100 electric percent vehicles, we all know that, zero emission charging, a world first. We are using AFC energy hydrogen fuel cells to produce the electricity which powers our race cars. This off-grid power solution uses only water and the sun, and the only waste product is water that we will use elsewhere on site. Now, this is absolutely fascinating, and to tell us a little bit more is Adam Bond of AFC Energy to tell us more. Today we're announcing a world first collaboration between Extreme E and uh, AFC Energy to partner in the generation of clean, sustainable energy in off-grid locations all around the world to charge Extreme E's electric vehicles. Extreme E provides us with a, a very important platform, not only to present the solution as a cutting edge alternative to off-grid power, but also as a first of a kind, if you like, opportunity to really showcase to a global audience what can be achieved if people want to actually start moving properly down a decarbonisation route. The solution that we're looking at at this point in time incorporates a, a green hydrogen source, so creating green hydrogen on site, basically creating your fuel at the side of the race, which, which is quite a novelty and, and quite a, a sort of a cutting edge place to be. More or less what we've got here is a fully self-contained power source, water source, uh, with zero emissions source from hydrogen that's created on site. I mean, that is absolutely incredible technology. So you're basically saying that the only byproduct will be water. Yes. 
That, that sounds crazy, I know. But yeah, the only byproduct will be water. It's totally off-grid. It's the perfect solution, not only for our remote needs, but hopefully we will start to see wider adoption of this sort of technology for other event organizers as they notice the benefits. Here is how it works. If you remember your periodic table from school, hydrogen is one of the most common elements in the universe. So we can take some hydrogen and blow it into what we call the fuel cell stack. That stack is made up of 100 individual electrodes. Within those electrodes is a catalyst. So when you blow hydrogen and oxygen into that stack, you are presenting those gases against the electrode and a form of electrochemistry takes place. Wherein the result of that reaction is an electron and a unit of H2O, water. So the electron is taken and passed into the battery which charges the car and the water will be used elsewhere on site. So you start with water, you crack that into hydrogen and use it through a fuel cell and you get electrons and H2O. Impressive, right? The battery itself would be able to keep a portable tablet charged for five years. Pretty incredible. Another important aspect of Extreme E is that we aim to have minimal personnel on site at Extreme E events. This is a closed door racing without fans, a feature that was already planned before COVID-19 took hold. Fan travel to events creates a huge global carbon footprint, which we want to avoid, whilst also minimizing local impact on these environments. It is like no other motorsport. Nothing like this has ever been seen. But the fact that nobody is really there on site is not a problem. We're having a state-of-the-art digital media proposition which brings the action straight to the fans so they will feel closer to the action than ever. Thank you, and thank you for the science lesson. It reminded me Welcome. of Mrs. Ellis in my GCSC biology <laughs> class. <laughs> okay, so fantastic stuff, Alejandro. Thank you for that, and lots of exciting things to talk about today. But now it's time to introduce our first two teams, and in doing so, reveal their liveries for season one. Now, it is time to welcome our first team. You may have heard about them on the news by now, a team that hits the headlines with their passion and commitment for sustainable racing. So we're so excited to welcome Team X44 and delighted to be joined live on our studio wall by X44 founders Mark Hines and none other than six-time Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton. Uh, Lewis, Mark, welcome. Great to see you both. Thank you so much for having us. Well, thanks for being part of it. Um, Lewis, now you're a team founder of X44. Um, it's electric, they're SUVs, it's off-road, it's going to extreme locations around the world. Um, I'm going to throw it out there. It's quite different <laughs> to what you're used to and your past history in motorsport. Um, why do you think Extreme E is the uh, right series for you? Uh, well, thank you. I mean, I was so excited to hear about Extreme E, um, largely due to the, the focus on the environment and the, the, you know, the, the mission to raise awareness for, uh, about climate change. And that's something that's really close to my heart and something that I'm really passionate about. So, you know, it gives an opportunity to, uh, to me to be, for me to be able to merge my love for, for motor racing um, together with my love for the planet. And, and really, I think bringing those two together, we can have a really positive impact. Um, and, you know, I think naturally being aware of um, the platform that I have uh, and my position, I think naturally having a responsibility to push for, uh, uh, be a positive force for change. And I think I've always wanted to be, have my own team. I just never knew when it would be. And when I heard about this, um, I jumped right at it just because of the, uh, what the series means, what the series is going to do. Um, it, it's 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 um, it's going to be quite powerful, I think. It's a very exciting prospect ahead of you. But I mean, Mark, you know Lewis better than anybody. Come on, be honest. How do you think he's going to do in this new role? Well, Lewis is brilliant at everything, so I've no doubt that he'll be, <laughs> he's going to excel. But I, I think this is a series that really captured our imagination, Lewis. I think you'd agree, and it, it it's a platform that's 
kind of relevant to the world we're living in and it really aligns with Lewis's sort of goals and ambitions and uh, seemed like a, a, a new team we could set up for, for a new era. Um, it allows us to understand more about sustainability, more about taking ourselves on a journey of learning and, and um, you know, I think we all have a, a long way to go to understand the challenges our planet's facing. Actually doing something about it, I think, is the thing that really um, excited us about this, this championship. Exactly. And I mean, also, Lewis, you're a huge supporter when it comes to diversity. You're very vocal. You use your social platforms to talk about things like Black Lives Matter. Um, clearly a very important issue to you. How are you going to plan and ensure that diversity is brought to, uh, to your team and to the sport? Yeah, I mean, we, we're naturally, we're still in early stages. Um, obviously, it, there's a lot of work going on in the background, um, but providing opportunities to those from a more diverse background is naturally a priority for us. But, you know, we're currently exploring the best ways in, in order to do that. But I think it's not a quick fix for the motor racing industry to, to move into an inclu more inclusive direction. I think it's going to take some time. It is a process to address the inequalities that, um, that are along the career pathway for, for many people. But I really do think that this is an opportunity for us to kind of lay the foundations and uh, amongst some of the other things that I'm doing and trying to find what the barriers are. Um, as I said, there's a lot of work to try and go out and just create opportunity for people to come and, and work for something that's just gonna have a positive impact. So I think, I think those two together can be really impactful. So many ways that this championship can have that positive impact. There is also obviously when it comes to sport, taking action and responsibility for what it's doing to the environment. Um, how big of an impact do you think Extreme E can have? And also other sport, how can they learn from it? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that really attracted me to this opportunity was that, you know, we, I think in life, we, we all need to take responsibility for the planet. Um, we've got all got to do something, but each and every one of us can have a positive impact just by, by implementing small changes. And I think that's really why Extremely uh, is, is so important because it's gonna keep people um, talking about the climate uh, issue and, and un, you know, inspiring us to take action. That's the great thing with Extremely, it's not just going out to these great places, it's actually gonna do something in those locations to make a, a, a change. So I think to have a championship series that addresses traditional, you know, will address the traditional ways of, of racing and um, the negative impact um, motorsport does have on the, on, the, on the planet and offer an alternative. Um, and the great thing is just the new technology that we'll be using and, um, you know, uh, pushing to, to be innovative. So, you know, for example, Extreme E is also using the hydrogen, uh, the hydrogen fuel cell technology which is amazing. It's going to charge the race cars with um, a zero emissions uh, energy source, which I think is absolutely incredible. And I think hopefully we'll start, you know, start that ripple effect and hopefully other industries and in the motor industry will start going in this direction more also. I think one of the, one of my favorite things also is, you know, when we're talking about diversity is the fact that we, um, I've been racing in this sport over 20 years and seen maybe two maybe three female drivers along the way and i think the opportunity when we're talking about diversity and inclusivity that is a key issue i think um in the industry and i, I love that extreme e is allowing to have two drivers a male and a female and um and you're going to see that also transcend down through the small team that we have um and that's a key focus for us yeah, there are clearly so many aspects of this championship that, you know, really, really work with all of your kind of, um, yeah, the, the things that you want to achieve at the moment in life, it seems. Uh, but the most important thing, of course, is the car, which we haven't seen yet. So now we are going to reveal your new X44 car in its brand new livery. And uh, yeah, you have to let us know what you think. Now, of course, this is in the virtual world. <laughs> oh, wow, that's but it's cool. still looking pretty good. What do you think? It's awesome. I haven't seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> How integral were you to the design of this? Uh, I Actually, I play a part in, in, particularly when it comes to design, I play... A, Everything he plays a part in. I'm yeah, just... <laughs> unfortunately. I like um, collaborating. I like getting involved in, in all sorts. And 
this is just our first uh, kind of main go at it, but I, I'm sure it will evolve. But naturally utilizing the purple, which has always been my favorite color, bringing it from my race helmet that I've been using for the last year and, and really trying to, you know, naturally it's my team. It's, uh, it's very, very strange to be able to say that because I've been racing since I was eight years old for 20 plus years and um, I could only have ever dreamed of having my own team. That's what we like to hear. Uh, it's brilliant to speak to you both at the start of this journey. Uh, all the best for 2021, and we look forward to seeing how you get on. Thank you very much, Mark and Lewis Hamilton. Thank you. Now, one organization that knows a thing or two about racing and sustainability is ABD. The team have formed a formidable partnership with manufacturer Cupra ahead of season one with a mission to really use this platform to spread the word about electrification. Now, joining us live is one of their drivers, a world rallycross champion and two-time DTM champion, Matthias Ekstrom, and also the CEO at AB Sportsline, Thomas Beermeyer. Gentlemen, great to have you here today. So exciting. Um, Thomas, I'll kick off with you, really, because AB's been involved in motorsport for decades particularly obviously huge success in DTM, in Formula E, and now Extreme E. Tell us, how did all that come about? Yeah, motorsport is a very important part of our company. It's uh, the main DNA for our company in traditional and also in electrical motorsport. And we love adventures, we love competition, and especially Extreme E. We did the Formula E from day one on, and now in Extreme E, we are as well in, uh, from day one in and we fully trust the people around Alejandro Agak and Ali Russell and with Cupra we found the perfect partnership and we are really proud to have them on board and hopefully we will celebrate something together next year we have both companies high goals we not only want to win races we also want to win championships Absolutely. Well, I think to bring home the celebrations, you put the car in the right set of hands, that's for sure. Uh, Matthias, you have a huge amount of experience doing things like this. Never in the electric car world, though, I suppose. Um, talk to us about what's getting you excited about Extreme E. What can you bring to the series with all that experience? Thanks a lot for the kind introduction, Nikki. I mean, uh, I'm really excited to be a part of uh, Extreme E. Uh, since a while, I wanted to do something with electrical motorsport, and uh, that's why I uh, came to Cupra. They were wanting to be joining some new adventures, and we have been looking around a bit now. And for me to do a team together with Up and Cupra and do Extreme E, I mean, I get goosebumps when I say it because I spent so much of my time with Up, and uh, we had a lot of success, so that feels great but also to go racing in, in a place which not only about trophies. So it's also a little bit about sustainability and trying to raise awareness for people how we can take care of the planet. And uh, everybody knows me, I'm always in it to win it and there will be no dif uh, different this time as uh, I will do my very best uh, that we can get some big trophies for racing or hopefully championship. So I can't really wait to go racing again. Um, well, I think it's now time to take a look at your car, the Cupra Apt, and see what it looks like in its new livery. Guys, what do you think? Yeah, awesome. We, we, we love it. I hope you love it as well. It looks nice and hopefully it will be quick next year, but we are quite sure with Matthias we have a quick guy in the car. And the lady is still a big surprise. Yeah, OK. Well, hopefully it will be revealed very soon. Guys, thank you so much. It looks like an absolute beast. And good luck for 2021. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Now, Alejandro, building on the importance of sustainability, a big part of Extreme e is, of course, the legacy programs. Can you just talk to us about the projects that you're working on at the moment? Yes, our legacy programs are vital. It is imperative that we involve the local communities before we arrive. And while we are there, and long after we have left, we have departed. Extreme is partnering and uh, will support environmental, social and conservation NGOs in every location we raise. In Brazil, we are working with the Nature Conservancy, which is focused on preventing deforestation 
and focusing also on reforestation uh, in the states of Pará, uh, lands that have previously been deforested. In Senegal, we are teaming up with local NGO Oceanium to plant one million mangrove trees. These mangroves are incredibly valuable because they soak up carbon from the water and store it in the roots, as well as other benefits. The project will focus on five areas totaling 60 hectares, equivalent to around 112 football pitches, with the aim of reforesting mangroves, providing education to local populations and improving social cohesion. We are also working on an ecozone project in the village next to our racetrack in Lac Rose. Working alongside Group Senghor, an organization that addresses community needs while preserving the environment, and our Senegal legacy partner, TO.org, the project will focus on experiential learning, regenerative agriculture, and circular economy, specifically in that area, which was once a tourist hotspot, but now home to a community facing huge challenges. Here's a little bit more information about our legacy program. We will raise on destroyed locations that then we will try to fix or we will try to make a contribution to the local communities on and around those locations. We're going to leave a legacy behind. We're going to work with the local community, with the local authorities, to work on projects that will help the local communities here. Steered by the United Nations Sport for Climate Action Guidelines, our scientific panel of four world-renowned experts will lead research in these already damaged locations. And the St. Helena will act as a floating research centre, coordinated by the NL Foundation. Now, each race location will partner with specific projects to shine a spotlight on the work taking place at a local level. Forest loss is one of the big challenges that we have at the moment in our planet. The Amazon is at the centre of this challenge. There is a, a trend in increasing deforestation in the region. The Greenland ice sheet has been around for several million years. Since the last ice age, it's been retreating, but it, the rate of retreat has really accelerated. The ice is running off as water and increasing the rate of global sea level rise. Each of our scientific experts will provide key insight into their specialist area, ensuring that we race without a trace and leave a positive impact on the local area. Something that's integral will be that we have legacy projects in place, so that'll be both social and environmental. We want to involve as many of the local community as possible, so that's schools or local organisations. We're looking at long-term renewable energy solutions, solar power, wind power, and then on the environmental side, NGOs that are working to counteract the effects of the climate change environment. Five locations, five climate change issues, one mission. We want to bring awareness we want to showcase electric cars and we want to leave behind a legacy for those locations that are facing huge challenges linked to climate change and to pollution. So next up is Veloce Racing, co-founded by the team behind its industry-leading sister organization, Veloce Esports. And with double Formula E champion and former F1 driver, Jean-Éric Verne behind it, as well as the legendary designer, Adrian Newey, who is driving the operation as its lead visionary. So I'm very happy to say that live on the wall from Veloce are the founders, Rupert Svensson cook and Jack Clark. Rupert, Jack, hello, how are you doing, guys? Hey, Nikki. Hey, Nikki. <laughs> Um, now, just a bit earlier, we heard about the legacy program that's happening with Extreme. Um, Jack, just explain to us why this is so important for you guys. Yeah, it, it's hugely important for us. I think it you know, encapsulates the spirit of uh, the series itself. You know, we, we want to make an impact on the track. We want to win. But, uh, but the impact that we make on the environment and the, the locations that we go to, you know, that's it's it's part of what we're here to do. So. It's what we leave behind that's, that's so important and we're incredibly excited about the legacy programme. 
Yeah, so is everyone here as well. Um, and Rupert, I've got to ask you as well, because I suppose normally in the world, of, we've seen it particularly in motorsport, a motorsport team exists and then they have an esports team. Whereas you guys have done it the other way around. You have an esports team and now you have joined a motorsport championship. What's the decision behind that? Yeah, absolutely. It was a uh, uh, really when, when Extreme was announced, it was a, a concept stage. And when we were here, it was hard to come up with a reason not to do it, to be honest. You know, we, we see ourselves in esports as pioneers in, in the way that we've really approached and entered the racing esports space in particular. And with what Extreme, Extreme E was doing, it, it made complete sense for us to join. Um, you've got a rather special name attached to this project as well. I mean, Adrian Newey, the, sort of the creative designer behind so many incredible cars. Uh, talk us through what his role is going to be. Yeah, so he's obviously our, Adrian's our lead visionary. It's you know, we're incredibly honoured to have him a part of the team. Um, really, obviously, like you said, his experience and success through decades of Formula One really speaks for itself. And that experience and guidance is, is really going to help us as we, we you know, use Extreme E as a platform to develop further technology and, and uh, make a positive impact on the, on the climate. Yeah, absolutely. Cannot wait to see the uh, crazy ideas that I'm sure he's going to be putting forward very soon. Um, well, thank you both for joining us. Now, it's super exciting because we're going to see your car for the first time in its brand new livery. Um, so I feel like at this point, I would like to do a drum roll and reveal your new car for 2021. Let's take a look. <laughs> It does look pretty cool, awesome, aggressively awesome. cool. What do you think? Love it. Oh boy. Hey, fist pump. There we are. <laughs> well, huge congratulations. Car looks mega. All the best for 2021. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. guys. So next up is the team Andretti United. And I'm so excited to say that we have team owner and chairman Zach Brown and driver Katie Munnings here with us today. Um, Zach, Katie, thank you so much for joining us. Zach, just quickly explain to us a bit more about the team United Autosports because we've got a big powerhouse from the States joining a big powerhouse from the UK. What experience can you bring to Extreme E? Well, uh, first of all, thanks for, for having us. We're very excited. Uh, to be joining this new uh, new championship. Uh, you know, United Autosports is a team that we created about 10 years ago, uh, Richard Dean and I, that have been uh, primarily in, in sports car racing, uh, having uh, won Le Mans this year, which is quite exciting. And of course, Michael Andretti and the Andretti uh, uh, legacy is always very excited to go racing with. We uh, are partners in Australia in the Supercar Series. We've raced together. Uh, at McLaren and the Indy 500. And I think we've brought together uh, two organizations that uh, are built with a bunch of racers. Uh, we, we love to race together and we're super excited about uh, the new championship, our, uh, our two new drivers. And then of course, anything uh, Alejandro Agag touches uh, these days turns to gold. So we, we believe in his vision and, and uh, where the series is headed and can't wait for the first race. Well, Zach, Alejandro's going to love you for saying that. Um, and it's brilliant to have you part of this series with your experience as well. Um, but Katie, let's have a quick chat with you. So exciting. You're one of the drivers. Tell us about what it's been like driving the car. And also, I know you met your sort of team um, driver recently, Timmy Hansen. How was that? Yeah, it was an incredible first day in the car. Um, Timmy had driven it before um, briefly. I think he was doing some of the suspension development with Spark Racing guys. Um, and he said, you won't believe how easy it is to drive. It wants to be driven fast. You can give it so much confidence and it really feeds back to you exactly what you want to feel as a driver. Um, and I walked in and I looked at it and I thought, it looks massive. How are you going to get that kind of impression from it straight away? Surely it's going to take time to adjust. Um, but from the moment that I sat in it and the, after the first acceleration, the first break in the first corner, I understood what he meant. You know, it's such a strong car. And I think the whole championship is going to be as strong. It's an amazing legacy. It's an incredible idea, as Zach was saying. Um, and working with Timmy is something that I'm so excited about as well. He's such, such a phenomenal driver. He's got so much race craft. We're already bouncing ideas off each other and how we're going to learn and work together. I think, as you were saying, that they're a really strong combination. And um, yeah, I'm really honored to be a part of it. 
Yeah, and I'm sure you're going to have fans from all four corners of the world supporting you guys. Um, all the best. Now, before you go, though, we want to unveil your brand new car, the car that you are going to be driving, Katie. Um, so let's take a look at the Andretti United Extreme E car. And it's going to pop out and surprise you any minute now. <laughs> So there we go. That is it's quite iconic colours there with the red, blue and white. What do you think when you see that, Katie? Uh, this is the first time I've seen that. Um, that is amazing. What a design. That, that is going to be so cool to race. It's going to look amazing in the locations as well. That's awesome. I love that. So you've basically seen it the first time that we've all seen it. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, I can see you smiling there. You happy? Yeah, we like to surprise our drivers. Uh, not the first time I've seen it. We went through a few different uh, versions, but very happy with where we've, uh, we, where we've landed. I think it's very exciting. Brilliant. Well, thank you again, guys. Um, but, but also now, actually, we're going to see you, Katie, a bit of action of how your first experience in the Extreme E car went. Let's take a look. First lap of the day, first reaction. Obviously, I've driven the car before, and, and Katie hasn't, so I'll, I'll be first in the driver's seat, and, and she get a chance to, to sit next to me, you know, experience it, and then we change driver, and then, yeah, we have basically one charge of battery to, to enjoy. I'm excited. Me too. It's a cool thing, two drivers sitting next to each other and swapping places because there's so much to learn by actually going on the side, not driving yourself. I think we have very similar feedback on the car already of some of the things we're saying. It's both, it's, it's the same, which is a good thing because sometimes drivers can be on completely different pages. Usually we have different cars as teammates, uh, but we'll actually be in the same car. I mean, Timmy's obviously got loads of experience in rallycross and the kind of racecraft side, so I'm really keen to learn from him in that, that way and the overtakes and all of these kind of things that you've picked up on all, all, all over the years. You know, this is, this is a brand new race car in a brand new race series, in a race format that's never been done before. So it's all about being open to, open to new ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to get that appreciation. <laughs> that's teamwork. <laughs> Well, it's great to hear from the team so far. And now it is time to introduce the ship that they will be calling home. Um, Alejandro, we've talked a bit about the St. Helena today, an absolutely incredible ship. But tell us about her progress and how the development's going, getting her all ready for the start of the season. The St. Helena is, uh, is very special to Extreme. I just came back from, from you know, visiting her and it's looking incredible. This passenger cargo ship will be our centerpiece for our entire mission, transporting all our freight, all the infrastructure, including the vehicles by sea. Shipping, while not yet electric, is the lowest carbon emitting transport option, as previously mentioned. Since we hosted the series launch on her 18 months ago, the San Helena has undergone a multi-million pound transformation to minimize her emissions. This has included a full refurb of her engines and her generators, allowing the ship to run, to run on low sulfur marine diesel, known as champagne in the industry, rather than heavy diesel. Yeah, we like Perfect champagne. We love champagne, yeah. yeah. Um, many of the teams will be willing to, you know, They'll be drinking spray the first it. champagne uh, ever uh, very soon in the first race. All mechanical systems have been overhauled and improved where necessary. She is now capable of running on one engine and uh, cruise to increase the economy, further reducing fuel consumption and emissions. And to minimize waste, her 30-year-old interior has all been kept, but has been upcycled to improve aesthetics and appearance whilst being as eco-friendly as possible. Here's the project manager, Austin, to tell you a bit more. My role basically involves the whole refurbishment of, uh, of St. Helena, getting her ready for her future role, transporting Extreme E's equipment.
equipment and cars around the world to various exciting race venues. Basically, St Helena is as new as the day that she came out of the shipyard 30 years ago. Her engines have been totally refurbished. She now burns low sulphur fuel. You can't get better fuel. From an efficiency point of view, the engines are as efficient as they ever could be. The vessel won't be going at full speed, she'll be going at eco speed, which means that we get as much speed out of her for the, for the lowest carbon footprint as possible. The only thing is, she's not electric, but that may be some consideration in the future. She'll be going round to a wet basin to uh, complete tests on the cranes, lifeboats, engine, harbour acceptance trials, hats the call, and finishing the refurbishment of the interior. In a month's time, you'll see a completed St Helena. Now, that was a few weeks ago, and now here we are standing on the ship in the virtual world. Uh, but it really is incredible work to see the progress that has been going on. And I believe that this St. Helena is also going to be used for scientific research. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes. Um, as well as being our transport hub, we are excited about using the ship for important scientific work as we travel the world. Research vessels are expensive for scientists too, so we hope we can donate its use for vital research. We have an incredibly talented and knowledgeable scientific committee led by Professor Peter Wadham, who meet regularly to discuss different research projects and ideas that we can you know, use the, the, the ship for. The science team are working hard on this and we look forward to sharing more details in due course. Well, fantastic stuff there, and thank you so much for sharing this uh, with us, Alejandro. Now it's time to introduce our next set of teams from opposite ends of the motorsport world. It is Chip Ganassi and Tachita. Now, joining me live on the wall is Adi Sahanto, one of the owners of Tachita. Um, Adi, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, you're kind of new to Extreme E. Um, tell us how you first got involved. Uh, actually, uh, since the beginning of the, the Extreme E uh, launching, I was uh, following all the news, all the... Uh, data of the Extreme E, and uh, we've got also involved uh, in the beginning with Formula E probably. That's why now uh, when when starting with the Extreme E, we love to follow follow the the, the championship probably. Well, it's brilliant to have you part of it. And um, just explain to me, because obviously there is a massive boom around electric vehicles in Asia at the moment. The team to Cheetah yeah. is going to be flying the flag for Indonesia. There's also a huge influence from China. What opportunity do you see as being part of Extreme E? Well, uh, uh, people are very excited to welcoming uh, electric vehicles throughout Asia, probably and especially Indonesia, where they are very proud to be part of the team leading and the way. Many major vehicle producers such as uh, Hyundai, Tesla, Nissan, and you name it, are working very to, pro to provide environmentally uh, sustainable brands so to, the, to, the, to, the, to meeting their customers' needs, probably. Hyundai Indonesia, for example, are working in cooperate with Grab, that's the online taxi service, uh, with the development of the Hyundai Ionic and reflecting similarly work in Singapore and as well as in Thailand before. The development of the electric vehicle Asia extends also bus buses and trucks, as well as car this adoption with Asia help advance uh, the automotive industry to protect the environment. Well, great to talk to you. And the good news is we are now going to take a look at your 2021 car. Let's have a look at the Tachita car in its brand new livery. Aha, and here we go. So there is your brand spanking new Odyssey 21 Tachita car. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Bye-bye. Thanks. Good luck for the season ahead.
Chip Ganassi is a name synonymous with success in the motor racing industry for over 30 years, competing at the top level in IndyCar and NASCAR. And I am so pleased to be joined by American racing royalty, the man himself, Chip Ganassi and Mike Hull. Chip, Mike, great to have you guys all aboard the St. Helena here. Uh, Chip, let's kick off with you because you've announced a really strong American driver lineup. Tell us more about what we can expect from them. Well, thanks, Nikki. I think, um, you know, both Sarah and Kyle represent American motorsports, American car culture. And, and uh, we wanted to bring that along with us to the series. So, uh, but I think most importantly, from my point of view, they know how to win. And, and you know, when lined up side by side with, with, with other people, they know how to win. And then that's why we picked them. Certainly, Sarah's had a successful motocross career. She's had 17 amateur national championships. And, uh, and then you throw in Kyle on top of that. He's had over 100 short track, short course wins uh, in, in his career. So uh, above all else, they know how to win races. And you know, I like that. Well, I'm sure you've got the uh, right drivers there to carry on that winning formula, Chip. Um, Mike, just talk to us a bit about, obviously, with the announcement around Sarah and having a female driver for the first time at Chip Ganassi Racing. What was the reaction like? I think it's vitally important, uh, if you just had to say it in one sentence, first of all. Uh, Sarah has proven she can win. That has nothing to do with gender. As Chip said, to echo what Chip said, she knows how to win and she'll represent uh, Extreme E and the global significance of what we're trying to do as, as a winning race driver who happens to be female. Uh, that certainly puts us all in the bonus round. Uh, that it's really, really important for us and uh, we're excited about it. And uh, I was taken back by the global significance of our announcement when we announced Sarah as the driver. Well, I hope you've secured that contract with her for more than the first season, because she's going to be a woman in demand very soon. <laughs> um, Chip, tell us a bit more about Electric. I mean, why now? Are you, how are you feeling about joining an Electric Championship like Extreme E? Is this something kind of out of your comfort zone? Because in all of your past history, this is something very new. Well, it is, Nikki, and a couple things. First of all, you know, a long-term winning solution in any business is the right balance of, of what's best for right now and, and keeping an eyeball on the future, looking to the future. And, you know, here in the U.S., American manufacturers are pushing the development and global integration of an electric electrification, that, that platform, in their road cars. So as a race team owner at the leading edge of all this, we want to be part of that. And there's no better proving ground, obviously, than at the racetrack. Yeah, and uh, I know the fans are super excited to uh, see how you guys get on. Um, but before we say goodbye, we are very excited because we want to reveal your brand new car for 2021 with its new livery. Uh, so here is the Chip Ganassi racing car. Look at that. Wow. I hope it's that easy to bring it up out of the hold of the uh, of the ship when we, when we go to Saudi Arabia. Uh, <laughs> that's exciting. <laughs> of course it will. You got nothing to worry about, Mike. <laughs> it looks fast, and cars that look fast are usually fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a good sign. Start of things to come, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, Chip Ganassi, Mike Hull. All the best for 2021, and we will see you then. Thank you. Thanks very much.
now excitingly Extremey will visit five incredible diverse and breathtaking environments desert ocean arctic glacier and amazon now alejandro if you can take us through that season one calendar some incredible locations there but what's in store absolutely and this is going to be fun so we start the season with our desert expri the opening race takes place on march 20 and 21st and we will be racing in the region of al ula towards the north of saudi arabia an almost otherworldly place with biblical time heritage, which was used as the setting for Star Wars. Its sandstone karsts and sweeping open landscapes will provide a truly special backdrop for our opening stage. Drivers will have to tackle sand, heat, and arid conditions out here with a totally unforgiving test for the first outing. There is little shelter out and uh, control and handling of the vehicle will be key. From there, we head to the rather contrasting setting of the Ocean Ixpri. A race will take place in the west coast of Africa, in Lagos, Senegal, on 29th and 30th of May. A couple of hours from Dakar, our race location has the Atlantic Ocean on one side and the rather beautiful Pink Lake on the other which is naturally formed due to its incredibly high salt content. Senegal is home to a vibrant community, which is facing community displacement due to ever rising sea levels and plastic pollution brought by the oceans. Okay. Then we go onwards and upwards to the Arctic Xpri. Here we go to Kangerlussak on the southern eastern tip of Greenland. Racing taking place on August 28th and 29th. Seen as the front line of the climate emergency, our track stands in awe of the Russell Glacier, an imposing and rather somber visualization that ice cap is melting. This track used to be covered by the ice, which has now long melted away and left behind rock stone and gravel. No motorsport has ever taken place here before. We then head down to South America, where we stage the Amazon Expri on October 23rd to 24th. Our race will take place in the region of Santarem, in the state of Pará. A number of issues affect the long-term health of the rainforest here, with deforestation and wildfires among the most topical and pressing at this moment in time. When we visited last year, I saw this for myself. Areas of pristine forest, which were decimated by fire just a month later, which personally brought home the situation facing the Amazon. Finally, and this is the announcement of a new location for Extreme Season 1, which take place in place of Nepal, which was in our initial plans, we will head further south to Argentina where we will finish the season with a Glacier Expri taking place from December 11th to 12th. We will race in Tierra del Fuego, in the most southern part of Patagonia, which is world renowned for its dramatic glaciers and snowy mountain landscapes. However, as is happening all over the world, these mountain glaciers are undergoing rapid glacial recession, as well as suffering from ice thinning and permafrost reduction. Known as one of the world's final frontiers, this breathtaking spot in Patagonia is home to the town of Ushuaia, which is often referred to as the end of the world due to its location at the very tip of South America with Antarctica to the south. A poignant place to close our first season as we will see firsthand the effects climate change is having on our global ecosystems. Incredible. What an opening season this will be. And remember, we are not there to race on the ice cap or the glaciers or in pristine rainforests where we can do damage. The areas we race in are places which are already damaged, and these locations have been checked and assessed by our scientific committee. Here is the calendar in full.
So there it is in full. It's official, revealed here for the first time. The Extreme E Calendar 2021 will visit some of the most remote and damaged landscapes in the world. And of course, the journey all starts on board the St. Helena as it travels from the UK down to the Mediterranean, passing through the Suez Canal and docking on the coast of Saudi Arabia before we complete the first ever ex in the longest continuous sand desert in the world, the Rub al Khali. It's then back through the Med and up to the most western tip of Africa as we dock in Senegal to complete the Ocean ex -Prix before the long Atlantic voyage up to the Arctic Circle to Kangalusak in Greenland, which plays host to our third race location in the Arctic. Then it's down to the mighty Amazon rainforest. The state of Para welcomes the extremely Amazon x before continuing further down South America to the tip of the world in Tierra del Fuego for our glacier race in Patagonia, thus completing the first season of... <laughs> partners and uh, and sponsors and so on for the project we just thought uh, we need something to present to them and uh, that was the idea behind the model car and it's still there so uh, yeah I mean um, it is just uh, one of the of the things you do to to uh, to find good partners yeah um, now, we've just been through the calendar for 2021. Some absolutely incredible places that you're going to be racing on. Um, tell us about what you think of it. Yeah, I think it's a great combination. I mean, uh, it's really great to see these different venues and it's really complete uh, different um, climate zones. And uh, we're really very much looking forward to that because I think for, for most of all us, and especially for us at HWA, it's, it's completely new. Um, of course, it's also completely new to race off-road, um, so it's great to go into these locations and very different locations as well. And I think these locations have also been chosen incredibly well because they represent um, and the awareness and, and uh, the issues that are there with, uh, with uh, environment uh, pollution and whatever. So I think it is a good first start um, first, of course, um, on the attract attractiveness of the of the venues, but also I think they they raise uh, awareness to the problems we have there, and this is about extreme E, I guess. Now, Ulrich, I know we've got the brilliant little model there of your Odyssey 21 HWA car behind you, but now I want to present to you uh, your new car for 2021, a little bit bigger, uh, but in the virtual world. So let's take a look. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, um, has has been a big evolution compared to to uh, to what we see here. Uh, <laughs> however, no, I mean, uh, really stunning to see it. Uh, we've come a long way uh, since we first uh, talked about um, Extreme E, and uh, it's great to finally see a car. Uh, also, it's still virtual, but uh, I guess that is already usual for us in these challenging times. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's great to see it, and I think it's a great design. Um, it showcases exactly what our DNA and our brand is. So um, we're looking forward to seeing that on, on the dirt track. Yeah, as you say, it looks incredible here in the virtual world, so I cannot wait to see it in the real world. Ulrich, thank you so much, and we wish you all the best for your first season in Extreme E. You're welcome. Thanks, you. Thank you. So our next team is QEV. Based in Barcelona, QEV Technologies is a global electric mobility and automotive technology company. And now they join Extreme E. And very excited because we have with us live in the studio, COO Joan Oris and CEO Miguel Val de Cabres. Um, gentlemen, welcome. Wonderful to have you here with us today. Uh, Joan, can you just tell us a bit more because in that first year of Formula E, you were actually a technical partner to Team China, who went on to win that first season with Nelson Piquet Jr. You've also partnered with Mahindra and Neo, so you know Formula E very, very well. But tell us more about why you've wanted to join with your own team in Extreme E. Well, to be honest, it was a pleasure to be in Formula E from the beginning, from season one, and it was a fantastic experience where we won the first season. <laughs> 
uh, with this car that I have here behind. So it was a, a fantastic experience. And we enjoyed uh, to grow up with, uh, with Formula E, with the championship along six seasons uh, that we are there. So now that we have uh, the opportunity to join Extreme E from the beginning, it was uh, an amazing opportunity that we cannot lose. We have to be there with our own team. We have to be with our own license and we have to be part of this, of this history for the future. So it was a pleasure for us uh, to, be, to be part and to be one of the teams that will join this championship. Now, Miguel, obviously this event is virtual. We are doing the best to enjoy it. If only we could be in a room together. But there are challenging times at the moment around coronavirus. But the QEV team has actually, well, been doing some pretty amazing things at the moment in the situation, developing battery ventilators. Can you tell us how all this came about and what you've been doing? Well, basically, um, you're completely right. There was um, a big necessity in the Spanish market and also in the Latin America. There was a lack of respirators. We call them ventilators here, and it was a, it was a huge catastrophe. So uh, we had to react somehow. We had the technology, we had the engineers, and it wasn't, I mean, it was a challenge for us to do a complete ventilator in, almost, in less than a month. Luckily, we had the collaboration of a very big Spanish uh, hospital, Hospital of San Paul in Barcelona, and we together came out with a low-cost ventilator that had its own battery pack inside, and so we did apply the technology that uh, we learned in motorsports throughout these years uh, into, in, into a real life uh, necessity or solution that was really needed uh, in those days. We hope, we hope the ventilators won't be needed in this uh, second wave, uh, but, uh, but it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was, a, cute, uh, it was a, a very good shot, uh, showing the world that we are capable of doing something else than just motorsports, correct. OK, well, at the start of this new chapter, let's take a look at what your new Xtreme E car will look like with its new livery. Ooh, beautiful. Hey, Nikki, that looks like a winning car to me. It looks like a winning car to me as well. <laughs> no, it looks absolutely oh. fantastic. You must be very proud. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Extreme E family, for letting us be part of this history. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, guys, and uh, all the best for next season. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thanks. Thank you very much. Lovely car. Lovely car. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. See you soon. I'm Anita Kande. My name is Ariana Khan. My name is Evelina Cham. My name is Ritama Pandey. My name is Laila. My name is Sienna Stubbs. And I am a young woman from Northeast Arnhem Land. I'm a youth climate striker based in London. And I'm a global climate activist from Uttarakhand, India. Climate change is everywhere and the effects of it are devastating. Bangladesh was hit really hard recently by Cyclone Avalon in the middle of a global pandemic. And these extreme climate events are nothing new. In our country, we all have started witnessing the impacts of climate change in our daily lives. Rising sea levels, devastating floods, and prolonged droughts are the biggest hindrance to the efforts to end poverty. Nowhere in the world is invulnerable to extreme climate impacts. The climate crisis is happening. We need to stand together. We are all keepers of this land. some inspirational ladies there and great to see that they are raising awareness on climate change issues globally. Now, today we have met the teams, we've spoken to some drivers, some team owners, but I think it's now time to find out what the racing itself is all about. Um, Alejandro, can you take us through how the competition will actually work? Yes, the race format is going to be amazing. Uh, we've likened this format to a mix between Star Wars, pod racing meets uh, Dakar Rally time. It will be truly exciting to watch. Full action, short, sharp, wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Our world-class drivers and teams will go head-to-head -head over two laps. Each team has two drivers, one male, one female, who will each complete one lap as part of the race. 
This is a milestone moment, the first time this has ever happened in motorsport. Qualifying takes place on day one to determine the top runners who will progress through to the semi-final one, and the bottom competitors who will go on to take part in the semi-final two, what we call the crazy race. In the semi-final, the top three progress to the final. Whereas in the crazy race, the stakes are far higher, and the route to the final is tougher, as only the quickest team, only the winning team, will make it to the final. The winner of the final, the fastest, the fastest combination of team, driver pairing, car, and engineers over the two-day event will be the stage champion. There is also a hyperdrive feature. This will award an additional boost of speed to the team who performs the longest jump on the first jump of each race. That power can then be used at any point during the race. We have always been passionate about enabling fans to get involved directly. So another unique feature, which we revealed recently, is called grid play. Fans vote for their favorite driver to gain a grid advantage. The driver with the most fan votes gets the opportunity to pick their grid position for the final. Those drivers that do not make it to the final can gift their votes to their preferred driver, so they can play some strategies if they are competing against a driver that has gone to the final. And then the remaining grid is decided by the points from the previous rounds. Here is a short recap. Thank you, Alejandro. Uh, I just would like to tell you why the FIA Women in Motorsport Commission support Extreme Heat. For 10 years now, we have been striving toward gender equality and equal opportunities in the sport. Extreme E is now supporting this philosophy and uh, has taken a concrete action that uh, highlights uh, female racers' competence. It's for me a very, very important element. Uh, we are really supporting seeing more women competing in a mixed environment and we are extremely pleased with this great opportunity for them. Of course, the sporting format itself, it's uh, revolutionary with men and women competing together and against each other. It's so important for women to have the same material to compete on the same level. This is a chance I had when uh, during my time and it helped me to reach the top because I had no excuse. I just had to prove myself. So a lot of high profile female drivers have been attracted to the series because it's another platform for them to showcase their, their talent. And uh, I think uh, Sarah Price here uh, can tell you more about, about it. Thanks, Michelle. It's Sarah Price here from Chip Ganassi Racing. And here's a quick recap of how things will work in Extreme E. Every team is composed of a male and female driver, a world's first in motorsports. A race is two laps long across approximately 16 kilometers. The race weekend. Saturday and Sundays are when the action will really heat up, with qualifying on day one and knockout stages on day two. Day one. Qualifying starts on Saturday with each team facing off in four qualifying races to decide the ranking. Rankings then pass over to day two, the knockout stages. The highest ranked teams will go into the first semifinal, three of which will qualify for the final. The lowest ranked teams will go into the second semifinal, the crazy race, of which only one will qualify for the final. The final is a straight shootout. Four cars face off to decide one winner. The point system. Championship points are awarded at the end of each event, with bonus points awarded in qualifying and for the longest jump. To be a part of this series is very exciting for me. We are going to be making history and revolutionizing motorsports as it is today because we're going to have a male and a female driver competing on the same equal playing field. Our races are not long, they're going to be short, they're going to be fast, and they're going to be action-packed. So I hope that you guys understood the whole format and everything that I spoke to you today with, and uh, let's go racing.
Well, thank you for explaining that, Sarah. Now, on to our most recent addition to the championship. Announced last week, sees another Formula One champion make the transition to all electric racing with his team, Rosberg Extreme Racing. Yes, the clue is in the title. So exciting because he's here with us now, Nico Rosberg himself and Kimo Limatainen. Gentlemen, welcome. So exciting to have you aboard our virtual St. Helena. Um, Nico, let's talk about, I mean, your experience to date, it has not been in the electric world, but why was it so important for you to become part of Extreme E? Well, as you may know, um, as an entrepreneur now, I'm totally focused on sustainability with everything I do. And this Extreme E project is like the perfect crossover between my past, my future. So the most awesome racing, crossing over with the opportunity to really help preserve the environment around the world. And that's what's really fascinating me. It's amazing to see your passion for this um, because you do at the moment, you use your voice, you use your platform to talk a lot around sustainability and also, you know, supporting green tech along the way. Um, how do you plan to sort of use your platform to, to get your voice out there as much as possible with Extreme? Yeah, Extreme is also exactly that. It's an incredible platform which we can leverage on as well. So I've already formed partnerships now with local and international foundations. For example, also the Prince Albert II of Monaco Foundation. Uh, and we're already planning lots of things in, in ways that I will be able to support in various locations around the races as well. Um, and this is what I'm really, really excited about together with my team to create this long lasting local impact uh, right around the races. And I mean, you must be very excited by the calendar going to such extreme locations around the world. Yes, I mean, for example, um, visiting Greenland, it's on my bucket list. And to be able to visit that now whilst going racing there, I think that's just so cool. And that's something I'm very, very excited about. Yeah, we cannot wait to watch it as well. Um, Kimo, just tell us, I mean, you guys are obviously the most recent joiners to Extreme. There must be a lot of preparation going on behind the scenes. Only six months to go till the first race. Tell us, give us a bit of insight into what's happening at the moment. Well, first of all, let me say I'm also very excited about the project. I mean, it's something very different, something very new, something fresh, uh, which suits the, the modern days. So I'm really glad to, to join this project or to be part of it. Um, as you said, obviously, there is still a lot of work to do. But uh, even though, um, you know, we haven't been sleeping the past week, so we have done our preparation work already. Um, but yet again, there is things to be done and we are going flat out for it uh, in order to be the quickest uh, when it matters. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Now, one piece of the puzzle is, of course, your brand new car, which we are about to unveil with its new livery. So let, without further ado, let's take a look. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> awesome, Nico. Nice. It looks, it looks fast. <laughs> yes. And cool. It looks fast. It will be fast. <laughs> I like the colors. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. Huge welcome to Extreme E, and we wish you all the best for your first season next year. Thank, thank you to all of you as well who've tuned in. <laughs> thank, thank you, you very you. much. Well, that's almost everything we've got time for. Hopefully you've enjoyed hearing all about Extreme, meeting the teams. But over the course of the last hour, we've had loads of questions. So before we finish, this is an opportunity to hear from some of our fans. And Alejandra, I'm going to pass over to you to answer these questions. And um, first up, we've got a question from Beth from the UK. Hi everyone at Extreme E, I hope you are well and you are all staying safe. My question for you is, as a sustainable racing series, I want to know what your long-term goals, plans and initiative are for the series. Well, thank you, Beth. And um, our plan is to be climate positive, to uh, take out of the atmosphere more CO2 than the one we are producing. Uh, that is our objective, and I think we will be uh, achieving that hopefully on season one. But of course, the long-term objective is to promote electric cars also in the most remote places, to show that electric cars also work in difficult terrains, also work off-road, and to have more people driving electric cars. 
Thank you, Alejandro. Big question there, Beth. Um, now we're going to move on to Romario, all the way from South Africa, and I think one of our youngest fans of Extreme E. Let's hear from him. <laughs> Hi, Extreme E. My name is Romario Valentine from Durban, South Africa. This is my Odyssey 21 car made from pollutants. I am an ocean warrior that cleans the beach once a week. I have a question for Alejandro. What inspired you to make Extreme E? And how will you save marine life? Thank you! Well, that's amazing. So if you need any inspiration, like uh, Romario is asking to uh, create Extreme E, that would be kids like him. You know, a kid that makes a car from pollutants and is asking me, uh, what are we going to do for marine life? It's important that everyone does something. And uh, even if we make a small contribution, and we're going to be making a significant contribution, but everything is it's small, in, you know, if you see the size of the oceans. We're going to clean some uh, coastline from plastic, which is a huge problem. We're going to promote research from the Santa Elena on uh, the quality of uh, the water, the situation of, with microplastics, uh, many of the different projects, acidity in the waters and so on in different parts of the world. This, this ship is going to go from places to places where normally boats don't, don't go uh, to, an, uh, to those locations. So we have a unique opportunity to promote fantastic ocean research from the Santa Elena. So that's what we're going to try to do to answer to Romario's question. Yeah, I mean, what, what a great guy. I mean, Romario, as well as being an environmentalist, clearly I think you're going to be a car designer as well. That is a brilliant Extreme E model. Um, thank you for your question. Now we're going to hear from Joey in the UK. Hello there, Extreme E. I've seen all the news about you and your raising awareness for the environmental crisis that we're all going through. But I was wondering whether any of the proceedings would be going to any charities uh, to help with research and helping people around the world in difficult circumstances. I mean, it's so fantastic to hear a kid uh, say, I've been uh, following and reading all the news about Extreme E. It's, it's just fantastic. We haven't even launched. This is exactly what we want, that, that uh, you know, a new generation really gets involved with and, and is very conscious, as we see, with the problems that the planet uh, is facing. And yes, we're going to be working with many different organizations from the Nature Conservancy in the Amazon to TOE.org, Oceanium in Senegal, to UNICEF um, in, uh, in uh, Greenland, to others. We're going to be working with many different organizations to try to uh, you know, make our small contribution to the fight against climate change and to the, to the crisis that we all face. Right, okay, now on to another question. I'm loving the diversity of all these questions. We've now got Perry all the way from the USA. Hey, Extreme E, it's Perry Jeffries from Central Texas. Do you have any plans to develop a RC car or video games so that we can play along with the adventure? I like the, the, the video game fan here. Um, definitely, yes, we are working uh, to develop a video game. We're working with our partner with Veloce, one of our teams. Uh, to go big on uh, esports, uh, so definitely those plans are there. We believe in fun inter, and we thank you for this question. Definitely, we are going to be pushing for that, and you will have news very soon. Um, now we have a question from Bianca Garloff from Autobuild. Hi, Alejandro. It's Bianca Garloff from Autobuild Motorsport, Build and Sport One in Germany. My question is: With Extreme E, you are not only fighting for the environment, but also for equality. Why and in how far are you doing that? Thank you very much. Thank you, Bianca. And uh, yes, it's true that uh, Extreme is going to be the first format ever to have uh, complete gender equality uh, on the race. Uh, this is a very, uh, very old objective of mine. Already, I think almost 16 or 17 years ago, I set up a Formula 3 team in Spain uh, with uh, two female drivers. Uh, but something wasn't working with the format. That didn't work really to put female and male in the same level. This is why we came up with this format in Extreme E, where men and women are equally important for victory. Uh, this comes from the tennis, the mixed doubles. If the woman fa makes a mistake or the male makes a mistake, it's the same. Uh, and here it will be the same. Uh, and actually, talking with many of the male drivers, they think that it will be the female drivers that will end up deciding the championship. So I think that's incredibly exciting for something like a new championship like Extreme E. 
think that is a reason alone enough to watch the championship unfold. Um, but now we have a question from Racer Magazine from George Tamayo. George Tamayo from Racer Magazine and Racer.com. Will Extreme E follow the Formula E model and open up areas for participating manufacturers to develop their own technologies? And if so, when might that happen and what opportunities would be available? Yes, thanks for the question. And the answer is yes. Uh, Extreme E will follow the Formula E model to open windows of development of technology for uh, the car manufacturers. Already on season one, uh, they will be able to modify the bodywork, the outside bodywork, to make the cars more similar to cars that uh, are available for, uh, for, you know, for the road. Uh, but on season three, we will start opening the powertrain uh, for development. Uh, we, have to, we have time to consider exactly how. We may want to go in the direction of uh, a motor inverter, but we may also be ready to go in the direction of uh, a battery packaging, for example, when we provide the common cells of the battery or others. That's a still work in progress. We have to talk with the manufacturers that we are in dialogue with to enter the series. But yes, there will be room for development of technology on electric cars. Well, thank you, Alejandro. And thank you for all of your questions. Amazing to see such a diverse range from all over the world. And remember, there is still time to get your questions in on the live chat function. Just ask away and our team will get back to you straight away. Um, but that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you follow at Extreme Live on all of our social channels and check out our content on our website and YouTube channel as well. Now, obviously, we're all very aware that this has been a strange year, but 2021 promises to be better than ever with an all new sport on the horizon. Alejandro Gag, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, and Nikki. we wish you all the best for 2021. Thank you. It is but once in every generation that the boundaries shift and we wake up to a new perspective. In 2020, everything changed. And as the world adapts, so too must we. 2021, a new year, a new dawn, a new era is born. Speak, for there are moments to be seized. There is a time for many words and a time for action. Take courage, for there are paths to be trod, lands to be conquered, and inside these steel frames, heroes will be born. These will be the moments for those who rule today will be remembered forever. And in our time, this tale will be told. The journey will be like no other. The electric odyssey begins.